baby. Praise the Lord. Come on. Come on, let's celebrate. We're gonna boast of His goodness. Brag on. Brag on His grace. Come on. Come on, let's celebrate. Come on. Come on, let's celebrate. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on. Come on, let's celebrate. Somebody need to praise. Praise the Lord. Come on. Come on, let's celebrate. Praise. Praise the Lord. Come on. Come on, let's celebrate. Praise. Praise the Lord. Come on. Come on, let's celebrate. We're gonna boast of His goodness. Bring on. Bring on His grace. Come on. Come on, let's celebrate. Come on. Come on, let's celebrate. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come, come, come on. Come on, let's celebrate. Praise. Praise the Lord. Come on. Come on, let's celebrate. Praise. Praise the Lord. Come on. Come on, let's celebrate. Praise. Praise the Lord. Come on. Come on, let's celebrate. We're going to boast of his goodness. Bring on. Bring on his grace. Come on. Come on, let's celebrate. Come on. Come on, let's celebrate. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on. Come on, let's celebrate. Praise. Praise the Lord. Come on. Come on, let's celebrate. Praise. Praise the Lord. Come on. Come on, let's celebrate. Praise. Praise the Lord. Come on. Come on, let's celebrate. We're gonna boast of His goodness. Bring on. Bring on His grace. Come on. Come on, let's celebrate. 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 We need to celebrate. Come on, let's celebrate. We need to celebrate life. Come on, let's celebrate. God is good. Come on, let's celebrate. And he's good all the time. Come on, let's celebrate. Come on, let's celebrate. Come on, come on, let's celebrate. Has he been good to you? Come on, let's celebrate. Do you ought to, you ought to pray. Come on, let's celebrate. Thank you, God. Come on, come on, let's celebrate. Today's a good day to celebrate. Come on, let's celebrate. To celebrate, celebrate life. Come on, let's celebrate. Woo, 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 celebrate. Come on, let's celebrate. Celebrate. Come on, let's celebrate. God is good. Come on, let's celebrate. And he's good all the time. Come on, let's celebrate. God is good. Come on, let's celebrate. And he's good, good all the time. Come on, let's celebrate. Celebrate with the shout. Come on, let's celebrate. Hallelujah. With the shout. Come on, let's celebrate. Celebrate with the shout. Come on, let's celebrate. Celebrate shout. Come on, let's celebrate. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, Hallelujah! Come on, let's celebrate. Celebrate Hallelujah. with the clap. Come on, let's celebrate. Pit pat, pit pat. Come on, let's celebrate. Oh. Celebrate with the clap. Come yeah, on, let's yeah, celebrate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pit pat, pit pat. Come on, let's celebrate. Celebrate with the way. Come on, let's celebrate. Yeah, yeah. Smile up to Jesus. Come on, let's celebrate. Let him know that you're having a good day out. Come on, let's celebrate. Woo! Celebrate with the dance. Come on, let's celebrate. Hey, give your feet a chance. Come on, let's celebrate. Do what you oh, can yeah. do. Come on, let's celebrate. Hey, it's between God yes, and you now. Come on, let's celebrate. Hey, can I get somebody? Come on, let's celebrate. Can I get somebody? Come on, let's celebrate. Can I get somebody? Come on, let's celebrate. To celebrate Jesus. Come on, let's celebrate. Hey. To celebrate life. Come on, let's celebrate. God is good. Come on, let's celebrate. God is good. Come on, let's celebrate. God is good Come on, let's now. Celebrate. And he's good, good all the time. Come on, let's celebrate. Can I get somebody? Come on, let's celebrate. Can I get somebody? Come on, let's celebrate. Can I get somebody? Come on, let's celebrate. Gonna get somebody Come on, let's celebrate. Hey, to celebrate Jesus. Come on, let's celebrate. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. worthy. Come on, let's celebrate. He's worthy, worthy to be praised. Come on, let's celebrate. Hey, yeah, yeah. celebrate with the shout. Come on, let's celebrate. Hallelujah. With the shout. Come on, let's celebrate. Hallelujah. With the shout. Come on, let's celebrate. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. With the shout. Come on, let's celebrate. Hey, hey. hey. 
Celebrate Hallelujah. with the pat. Come on, let's celebrate. Pit pat, pit pat. Come on, let's celebrate. Do what you can do. Come on, let's celebrate. In between yeah, yeah, yeah. God and you, yeah. Come on, let's celebrate. Hey, celebrate with the way. Come on, let's celebrate. My lips to Jesus. Come on, let's celebrate. And let him know you're having a good day, y'all. Come on, let's Can I get somebody? Can I get somebody? Can I get somebody? Hey, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Celebrate your cheese. Hallelujah. Oh, we celebrate your cheese. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ah, we celebrate your cheese. He deserves all the glory. Ah, you're good, God. He deserves all the praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. He is good. Goodness, God. You are good. Hallelujah. And he's good all the time.
I just want to tell you how much I love you, Jesus. From the bottom of my heart, Jesus, I just want to tell you how much I love you. I adore you and I worship you, Lord, yeah. Hey, 
Think about one thing he's done for you. Yes, now think about two. Oh, Glory, Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He's good, you all. He was good when I went to bed last night. Glory, Glory, Glory. He was good when I woke up this morning because yes. Lord knows I didn't wake myself. Thank God for his goodness. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory faithful. To God. Oh, you're faithful, Lord. Faithful, faithful, faithful. faithful. Got to be faster than that. Thank you. If we'll be here all day with this song. Glory to God. Thank God for a good drama. <laughs> That's anointed. Committed, faithful, reliable, trustworthy. Praise God, praise God. We're good now, praise God. It's good to know Jesus this morning. It's good to know him. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I know him this oh morning. God. Hallelujah. Beginning and the end. 
A bright and morning star It's good to know It's good to know the Lord I came to Jesus Just as I was I was weary, wounded and sad But I found in him A resting place And he Everybody ought to know him. It's good to know Jesus. Jesus. He's joy and sorrow. He's my hope for tomorrow. It's good to it's know. Good to know the Lord. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. And he pitied my every groan. Long as trouble rise I'll hasten to his wrong oh it's good to know it's good to know Jesus, Jesus. everybody ought to know it's him it's good to know Jesus. Jesus he's a lily of a valley he's my bright and morning star it's good to know it's good to know the Lord it's good to know it's good to know the Lord. You ought to know it's him this morning. It's good to know him. It's good to know the I'm Lord. glad I know him. It's good to know for myself. Him. It's good to know 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 him. When you get in trouble, it's good to know him. You can call on the Lord. It's good to know him. He'll be right there. It's good to know him. Every time you call, it's good to know him.
to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah.
hear from you, dear. We need a miracle. We will know what to do. We need a miracle. Hey, we need love. We need a miracle. We need a miracle. We need a miracle. We need it in our church. We need a miracle. We need it on our job. We need a miracle. We need it in our home. To do, Lord. We need a miracle. Hey, we need Lord. We need a miracle. Hey, we need Lord. We need a miracle. Hey, we need Lord. We need a miracle. We need a miracle, Lord. We need a miracle. Hey, hey, we need you. To. We need a miracle. We need a miracle, Lord. We need a miracle. Right now, right now, right now, right now. I'm getting mine. I'm getting mine. Hallelujah. Yeah, I like y'all need a miracle or something. Right now. <laughs> Glory to God. God bless his holy name. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. Praise God for his faithfulness. <laughs> <laughs> but go on, get blessed in glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Well, here she is. Sustain. Glory, glory, glory. Come on, give him some praise. Give him some praise. Come on, praise your way out. I dare you to praise him this morning. I dare you to give him some praise. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. We need a miracle. If you need a miracle, praise your way on in a miracle. We need a miracle today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is good and he is good all the time. I give him all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise because he is worthy to be praised. Praise God. I can lift my hands right now. Glory to God. And that's a praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody can't lift their hands this morning. Somebody can't walk this morning. But I give him praise with everything that I have. Praise God. You ought to give him one more praise. Come on. Give him your highest praise. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. I dare you to praise him one more time. Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. to God. Glory to God. Come on. Press your way in. Press your way in. You need something right now. Praise him. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. I don't know about Glory you, but I felt that this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, when you begin to praise him, no matter what's going on with you, give him the praise anyhow. Hallelujah. Because he is worthy. When you begin to praise him, he'll do some things. He'll turn some things around for you. Glory to God. He'll turn some things around for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. I want you in the building to help me welcome our internet audience. Come on. Let's give them a VLCC welcome this morning. Welcome. Good to have you. Woo! Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. We welcome you to our service. Praise God. As you can see, as always, I'm all wound up. Praise God. I'm just wound up for Jesus because he is so good to us. He's good to me, and I give him praise. Praise God. We want to thank you for viewing this morning. You will never be the same. Praise God. I tell you, you will never be the same. Praise. But stay tuned. 
to the word, for the word of God this morning. Our man of God is going to bring us a word from heaven. And we're expecting here in the building, and you expect it too. Praise God. We just want to say, again say thank you for viewing us this morning. Hallelujah. Well, come on, y'all. Let's give God some praise one more time. Come on, give him some praise. I tell you, when you start praising him, you'll feel like praising him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is so good. Hallelujah. Well, lift your hands all over the building. Glory to God. Glory to God. Sister Diane Myers. Girl, praise God. Everybody. Something good is going to happen to you today. Do you receive it? Woo! Praise God. I'm expecting it. I'm expecting it. Clap your hands and give God some praise for it. Come on, give him some praise for it. Give him some praise for it. Hallelujah. Something good is happening right now. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. You may be seated. These are our announcements. Something good is going to happen. And I'll tell you, it's happening right now. I believe that. Praise God. We're going to have praise reports. I keep saying it. I keep saying it. We're going to have praise reports of something good happening to us. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. These are our announcements. Our children's ministry, you will meet today. Praise God. Parents of students ages 3 to 12 years of age. You are encouraged to continue bringing your boys and girls to children's ministry on the second and fourth Sundays. Our boys and girls continue to show great interest in class participation. Praise God. Thank God for that. Thank you, parents, for bringing your children and grandchildren to us to teach God's word. Praise God. Praise God for our children's ministry. Come on, let's give it up for our children's ministry. Woo! Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, it's celebration time. Woo! Glory to God. BLCC family and friends, it's time to celebrate with our pastor and family for 30 years of faithful service. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm excited. Yes, come on, give me some praise for 30 years. Woo! Glory to God. Nobody but God. Glory Hallelujah. to God. Hallelujah. We've been through the storm and rain. <laughs> Woo! Oh, but we made it. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. 30 years. Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's an honor to have Pastor Douglas as our leader, and it's a privilege to bless him with our monetary gifts of love, our presence, our involvement during this 30 year celebration. Envelopes for our Pastor's Appreciation Day is located or located at the front entrance on the tide boxes, or you can get them from our greeters and our urges. Get one, get one, get one. Hallelujah. Don't hesitate with your planning and saving for our special event, which will be held Friday, September 16th. Mark your calendars, Friday, September 16th. Tickets are available today. Praise God. You can get your tickets today. Get your tickets today. Some good's going to happen to you. Get your ticket today. Get your ticket today. Praise and it may be, The ticket may be purchased from Sister Ashley Douglas. Praise God. Praise God. Ashley's waving her hand. Everybody know Ashley. I love Mama Foo Foo. Yes, God, you can get your tickets from Ashley. We've already had some people to get their tickets. It's not too early. Get your tickets now. So we'll wait till the last minute. Praise God. Ticket prices are zero to four years of age, free, ages five to 12, $20, and ages 13 to and above adults is $50. Praise God. We have the same price every year for all this time. Praise God. But we believe we're praising God. That's nobody but God. Glory to God. We're looking forward to everyone's participation at this milestone celebration. I'm excited. Are you all excited? Woo, excitement is in the air. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. All candidates for baptism, you are asked to meet with Minister Louise Lee. Glory to God. She's waving her hand. And Sister Glenda Carter. Praise God. She's probably in the bookstore. Praise God. In the choir room, immediately after service. Immediately after service in the choir room, you will be fitted for your baptismal gown and give us specific instructions and information about baptism. Praise God. Glory to God. I want to remind you, you can make your contributions before and after service with your debit or your credit card in our bookstore. Also, you can give on your smart, from your smartphone or your tablet by downloading Givelify, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y, 
this app. You can uh, download it and follow the instructions. Praise God. It's a wonderful tool. We have several people, a lot of people using it. It is a wonderful tool. So make yourself available to that. Praise God. The basic interfaith caring, the needs, the list is posted in the bookstore as well as the fellowship hall. And as always, Pastor and I would like to thank you for being a blessing to those in need. Hallelujah. You are a blessing. We praise God for you. And we want to bless you for being a blessing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Our regular scheduled services here at the church, Sunday school, is at 9 a.m., our morning worship. It's at 10 a.m. every second and fourth Sundays is our children's ministry, which is today. Hallelujah. They will go back. Pastor, if he doesn't dismiss you, you already know, go back to your sessions back there. Because sometimes we get all wound up, we forget to do that. Praise God. But you go back and enjoy yourselves and have a good time. Our children, we're so excited about our children. Praise God. I, you know, sister, daughter, I love them. I just make them all them cupcakes and all that stuff. Oh, Lord, I love them. I love them. I love them. I love them. Our midweek service is Tuesday at 7 p.m. Our teens ministry will be next Tuesday, praise God. Thursday, we have a noonday class. And Friday is the most important meeting, as I always say, of the week, which is prayer at 6 p.m. Well, praise God. That ends our announcements right now. We'd like to meet, greet, and welcome all of our first-time visitors. If we have any first-time visitors this morning, would you please stand to be recognized? All of our first-time visitors, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Well, praise God. Come on, y'all, give them some love. You. Give them a VLCC welcome. Come on, you know Good how we do you. it. Come on to God. Hallelujah, praise God, Good praise God. God. Praise so God. good to have y'all with us this morning. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, give them some love. <coughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Give them some love. Give them some love. <laughs> Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. Well, praise God. As you can see, we are hugging and loving church. Hallelujah. We are so glad you are here. Thank you for visiting with VLCC this morning. Amen. Praise God. And these are guests of Sister Chanel, Minister Chanel, and Brother Styles. Praise God. This is your aunt. Oh, Pastor, praise God. Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. Praise Woo! Make them feel welcome, welcome, welcome. We want to welcome you to our church. Praise God. Our church is a place of hope and victory in a difficult world for all people. We have a saying here, if you come to those doors for the first time, mm, pastor, so stay with it. Y'all never be the same. Oh, glory. Yeah, clap your hands, brother. Hallelujah. You'll never be the same. Glory to God. Woo! As if, as, since you came in these doors today, you will never be the same. We want to say thank you for taking the time to come by and visit with us. Praise God. We're off the chain here, you know, and Sister Douglas is really off the chain. But I, I just give God everything I have because he's so good to us. He's been so good. He's brought us here 30 years, and praise God. We want to say thank you again. If you take those cards you receive, fill them out, take it to our bookstore. We have a gift for you saying thank you for visiting with us today. Come on, everybody. Let's give God a praise for our visitors this morning. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, everyone, I want you to stand up, and I want you to put your hands together. And I want you to shout to the top of your voice. Come on, let's receive our pastor, Pastor Douglas. Hallelujah. God is good. And he is good. And all the time. And when will he come through? For who? I was just checking the house. Make sure I got the right crowd up in here. Glory to God. It is good to be here. Um, it's better than being in the best hospital in the world. And it's better than being in the most beautiful casket 
that you could possibly buy. It's just good to be seen, isn't it? And here's, 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 here's the kicker. And in our right mind, there's such an attack on the people now with this dementia and Alzheimer's. It is a, 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 a evil attack of the devil against God's people. But I know a man from Galilee. He's a healer. And he's healing today, glory to God. And that's why we are studying on miracles right now, because we need a miracle. I mean, when, I, when I'm singing that song, that's, that's part of my testimony, glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I've seen God do it. And since he did it before, he'll do it again. Hallelujah. And so to, today, by the help of the Holy Spirit, God has a word for this house. I said before when I said it again, I don't preach sermons. I bring a message from the Lord. God wants to speak to us today in this area because we have, we have an incomplete gospel. And that's why the world is not in, interested in what we got to say uh, because we don't have nothing to entice them or excite them. The word might be rich and true. But people in this society or in the, in, in the world who are not born again, they are functioning from their five senses, which means they have to see something or feel something, experience something. We're operating from the Spirit. We, we just know things by the Spirit. But when you're operating from, from the flesh, which is what the Old Testament saints did, God operated from the outside where they could pick up these things with their five senses. Well, that, the world still needs some, 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 some information from heaven that we'll be preaching is true. And that's where miracles come in. Hallelujah. And we need some miracles. Amen? Right now. Right now. Praise God. You that are watching my internet, it's so good to have you. Welcome to our service. You will be blessed by what God is going to do. If you have, and Lord, I know the praise and worship bless you already, but the word is going to take it to a whole nother, nother level. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so we're excited about what he's doing here in VLCC. We're going to take a moment, and we're going to just uh, uh, fellowship for a minute. We'll come back and pray and get into the Word. Amen? God bless. His glory shall be seen in 2016. His glory shall be seen in 2016. His glory. It's time. 
his glory shall be seen in 2016. Miracle, miracle shall be seen. Healing, Healing shall be seen. Deliverance shall be seen. Signs and wonders wonder shall be seen. Miracle, miracle shall be seen. Healing, Healing shall be seen. Deliverance shall be seen. Signs and wonders Signs and wonder shall be seen. It's time. Show me your glory. Show me, Lord Jesus. Show me your glory. It's time. 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 Show me your glory. Show me your glory, Jesus. Show me your glory. Have you all met everybody that you already know? Praise God, praise God. God is good. Y'all see that little short lady out there? Tell that, 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 that her, her husband said. <laughs> Father, it's a good day to be here. You ordained this moment before that was even a planet, before that was a speckle of anything. You already had this day in mind. Before we was even thought about in our mother's womb, you saw this day. You planned it. You set us up. You put us in the right place, in the right space to be here today to hear this word that you're going to speak to this house today. Thank you, Father, that we was obedient to heed the moving and the voice of the Holy Spirit. Thank you that every heart that is here is the heart of good soil. And the word that is spoken today will not fall to the ground unfulfilled, but it shall yield much fruit. In the lives and hearts of these people, we'll in a place not challenged, but not change, not challenged, but change in your presence, O oh God. I yield to the Holy Spirit. You know what you want to do. I trust you to speak through this vessel of clay. Now confirm the word, like your promise, with signs and wonders and miracles. We're going to praise in advance, O oh God. What you going to do right now by your spirit? Let me give you praise for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me see in the presence of the Lord. Turn me to the book of Mark 16. Again, this has been our foundation of scripture. Our subject has been, or our text, or our theme has been miracles, the fingerprint of God. Miracles, the fingerprint of God. Um, and like I said before, the devil always has a counterfeit for any and everything that, that God is, is doing. And, and that's just part of, the, part of the package. That's just the way it is. But that's why we are born of the Spirit, so we can know things by the Spirit. The Bible said, try the Spirit by the Spirit. And so you can discern things when, I've said before and I've said again, before man fell, he discerned, but after he fell, he had to learn. And learning is slower. It takes time. Discerning is immediate. You just know. And that's, why, that's how Adam was able to name all the creations of God, all the, all the animals and the, the, and the, uh, the, 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 the uh, fish of the sea and all these things, because he was connected to God and he discerned what was God's mind. But after he fell, he... He, he lost connection with the Father because the Bible says 
If you eat a tree, you're going to die. He died spiritually. I mean, he was separated from God. So now he was operating on a lower level. Education came in after the fall. Where men had to start learning things rather than discerning things. And since we have to learn things, that means we do it by trial and error. We do it by uh, experimentation. That's why your doctor still tell you that they, they are practicing. Hello? And they practice on living human beings. And you pay them to practice on you. Can I get a witness? And they tell you, well, let's, let's try this for a while. Well, uh, let's try this for a while. You said, you said that's a little bit too strong. Well, let's back off a little bit. Let's try this for a while. Which means what? They are still learning. But when you're operating from the Spirit, you, you, you discern. You know because whatever God knows, you have access to because of the Holy Spirit that's living on the inside of you. First Corinthians chapter, chapter 2 says, you know, I have not seen nor yet heard, neither been the heart of the man with things which God has prepared them to love him, but they have been what revealed unto us by his, who? his Spirit. And he said, the Spirit searches all things, what? Yea, the deep things of God, and there's one purpose for it, to reveal them un, unto us. God wants us to know what he, he knows. Scripture even says that, says that there's nothing covered shall not be revealed, and what? Hid that shall not be made known. The Spirit of God is in us to, to reveal God to us. Every man wants to know his father. I want to know my daddy. And my daddy wants me to know him. Hallelujah. And so he sent us his spirit, who is the spirit of truth. He's also the, the, the uh, a spirit of life. So I got life and truth in me in the person of the Holy Ghost. He resides in me. And then the book of Romans 8 says what? For as many as what? As I led by what the spirit of God, they're the sons of God. So the, the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in me. In all his power. And when I need to know, I can know. Because the one who knows all things lives on the in, inside of me. You know, the word that said, great is he what that is in me, that he what that is in the world. That's why I'm not afraid of the devil. Because he has no power, he has no authority. Jesus stripped him legally. Glory to God. Stripped him legally. Died in our place by the blood, and the blood still testifies. Here's what I said before. I'm, I'm going to say it again. The devil cannot change, alter, or stop any word God has ever spoken. The devil cannot change, alter, stop any word God has ever spoken. Well, I want to ask you a question. You got some words God has spoken? Yeah, 66 books of them. The devil cannot stop one of those 66 books of words God has spoken. He can't change it. He can't alter it. And when you put God's word in your mouth, glory to God, hallelujah. The devil can't stop, change, or alter anything you say. See, the devil's tactic is to try to intimidate you. Here, 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 here we go again. Fear is not of God. God has not, 2 Timothy 1, 7, God has not given us what? The spirit of fear. Well, if it didn't come from God, who would it come from? So if it's the devil, you don't want it. So you don't walk in fear, you walk in faith. Because wherever faith is, fear isn't. Wherever fear is, faith is not. They don't cohabit together, one or the other. But the devil tried to intimidate you with things, words. He have doctors tell them to you, people tell them to you. Pookie, Ray Ray, Bubba, Sequita, Helen. And you got you to become single-minded and, single, and speak one language. What have God said about it? God has spoken. 
That's a wrap. In the story, final answer. Let the church say, I agree, let that be me. See, once God has spoken, see, God has already spoken 66 books of words that the devil can't change, can't alter, and cannot stop. Do you realize when, when, when Jesus was confronted with the devil, he didn't use a new word. He went all the way back to the Old Testament and pulled out an old word. And pulled all three of them from, from the same book and said, it is written. And shut the devil down. That's why he don't want you in the word or around the word or in a place like this where the word is going forth all the time because the devil knows the word has already defeated him once on the cross. Now the word defeats him again because it's what? It's in our mouth. And we're believing the word. So what he tries to do is he tries to deceive you. He'll lie to you like he lied to uh, Eve. I don't blame her. I, I blame him. <laughs> Boy, the sister spoke up real quick, didn't she? <laughs> I blame him for not shutting her down because he was, he, he was right there. The Bible said he was with her. When the devil was talking to her, getting all confused. Hello? And then she misquoting what God had said because evidently Adam had told her. Because when, when God told him, she wasn't even created yet. So the responsibility was in the man. And he should have he did like Job did. His wife shut her down. I ain't scared. Hallelujah. If Adam had obeyed God over his wife, we wouldn't be in the predicament that we're in now. When Joe's wife tried to get him to, get him to curse God, he said, you foolish woman. He shut her down. If it's not the word, you ain't got to agree with his brothers. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. <laughs> in your spare time, go back sometime and just read the Old Testament and see how many times God destroyed the men and not the women. Because the responsibility is in the man. Nothing happened when she ate is when he ate. So you ain't got to go along with everything they want you to do if it don't line up. <laughs> I'm telling you this flat out, brothers. If it's not lining with the word of God and what God has told you, you ain't got to go, go along with that. Now, you might have to sleep on the edge of the bed for a while, but... <laughs> but I'd rather be in good graces with, with God. Hello, somebody. And so, you got to have courage, boldness, strength. Isn't that what, he, isn't that what God told Joshua? Be of good courage, be bold, and be strong. He said, you're going to need all three of those to do my word. Because you're going to always have somebody in your ear trying to tell you it don't take all that. Y'all said, if me in my house, we're serving the Lord. And the rest of y'all can do whatever y'all want to do, but I'm just letting you know what's going on in my house. See, the man spoke up. The man spoke up. The problem is, word of men. Hallelujah. And so women are not 
embarrassed of a man that knew how to praise God? See him on his face before God, praying for the family? In the Word? My wife know my lifestyle. It's been that way since, for, since, since I finally got it right. Because <laughs> I've raised in church all my life. It's almost been the same way. You know, you raised in church, but the church wasn't. Hello. Because on Friday night, you wasn't on your way to church. Living for the weekend. <laughs> mm hmm. But look what the Lord has done. Huh, Cynthia? <laughs> I know the Lord works miracles. Hallelujah. Now, watch this now. Mark 16. And I want to begin, back up a little bit. I've been starting in that 20th verse, but I want to back up because the Lord showed me something that uh, I want to tie in with this because I, I think it's critical. Miracles. Right now, miracles. Not tomorrow. Right now. In the 15th verse of Mark 16, by the way. And he said unto them, go, go ye into where? All the world and preach the gospel to how many creatures? Everything. Which means Jesus said, I didn't, I didn't die for five people. I died for everybody. So everybody needs to hear the good news. Everybody needs to hear the good news. They don't have to die. They can be born again. They can live eternally. Every creature, every man needs to hear this revelation, needs to hear this good news, this truth. Every man needs to hear this. Go to the 17th verse. What it starts out with. Go ye to all the world, preach God to every creature, and see verse six, 16 is just kind of a, a parenthesis of what should be happening with, when you preach the gospel. But he said, but 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 here's what tags along with verse 15. And these signs, that's the same word that's in the 20th verse, that is the word miracles. If you translate these are signs or miracles, and these signs are these miracles. Jesus said these things is supposed to be going along with the gospel of the good news. Because it's going to be hard to convince some people just by what you're saying. You can tell me how good that car is. I, I said, but yeah, but let me do a test drive. Let me do a demo. Well, now they, they just give you the keys to tell you come back tomorrow with it. Take it home. Spend some time with it. And then bring it back. If you don't bring it back, they, they will find you. Because nowadays all these cars have locators on them. So you can try to run. And then now, and also, they can shut it down from where they are. Just don't pay your note and see. <laughs> you try to start, it will not start. Because that star system, all this, all this modern te technology has its goods and its bads. Good for them, but bad for you if, if you're not paying. They can shut it down, turn it off, and you can't start it. But the world want to see some proof 
So the Lord understanding this said, well, you know what? He said, not only will you go preach, he said, and these signs of these miracles shall follow them that believe in my name, on my authority. I authorize you to go. And what's the first thing he said you got to deal with? The first thing you got to deal with is some devils. Anybody had to deal with the devil? <laughs> Anybody dealing with the devil? They just shut him down. That's all. <laughs> Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and slice him and dice him. Cut him up. Take that word, put it in, in your mouth, and it becomes a two-edged sword. And every time you speak, even though you can't physically hit him, or you can spiritually hit that dude, man, with the word and just jam him real hard. Look what the Bible says. The word is like a hammer. So every time you speak that word, just see the word going upside the devil's head. Glory to God, hallelujah. Make you just want to quote a scripture right now, don't it? Did I cut? What? Hit him. Slice him and dice him. Cut him up. He don't have no power. No authority. Deception is used to make you give yours up. And talk yourself into something that you don't want. That's why I keep telling you, watch your words. Shut your mouth. Speak life only. Proverbs 18, 21, life is in the tongue. I choose to speak life only. Only. Oh, bye, bye. Buddy, you about to wear me to death. You'll never hear that. You'll never hear me speak no foolishness like that. I'm going to speak death on myself. I'm going to speak myself, or, or, or I'm going to talk myself crazy. You should about to drive, drive me crazy. The devil say, Yes! Keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. You're playing right into my hand. You're giving me a legal right to do that to you because your mouth, your mouth has released it. Words are spirit. Words are spirit. You can't kill a word. You can't kill a spirit. You can't kill a word. Once it leaves your mouth, it's, it's, the, the scripture says, word is seed. And seed is where life comes from. So when you're speaking these words, you are releasing seed that's going to that's gonna give life to what you're saying. Now, do you really want what you're saying? If you don't, don't say it. You learn to be disciplined. Because the Bible says that the tongue is unruly, ruler, remember, you know, it's full of, dead, full, full of deadly poison, deadly poison. And it sets on fire the course of nature or it, it, it prophesies your future. You are today what you spoke yesterday. So how you want your tomorrow to be, you better start saying that today. That's why all I have is life and favor. You know I got favor. Favor, favor, favor. I was having them Friday night. I woke up Friday morning and uh, was flushing one of the uh, bathrooms and he started backing up. So I go to the other bathroom and it, it was backing up too. And look in the, in the, in the, the shower. It's backing up into the shower. Oh, Lord, this ain't good. That was a quick analyzation of the situation. <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> So my wife mentioned drain them. I said, no, we're going to call a plumber. We need to get this fixed now. So I call, call John, get more. <laughs> I like this. I call John, John, come out. Well, in between the time John was on the way, Something happened. 
in the system. Because when John got there and he fleshed everything, everything fleshed normal. We go outside and we look inside the, the, the uh, uh, what you call it, the uh, clean out. And it shows it had backed up. But by, by, by the time John got there, it cleaned itself out. I don't know how it happened. I don't care. All I know is I didn't spend one dime. Favor was on me. Oh, Lord. John said, if it, if it happened again, just give me a call. I will, John, but I'm not believing it's going to happen again. <laughs> I ain't setting my faith on nothing like that. No, had not a problem since. I see, all I speak is good, so when something bad shows up, it turns out to be good. I go, oh, Lord, what are we going to do now? Oh, Lord, why us, Jesus? Everybody else's house is doing all right. Why, why, why am I still backing up, Lord? No fools is like that. Just boom, call the plumber. Ain't having no pity party, ain't blaming nobody, ain't complaining. Just do what we got to do to get the thing done so we can go back to flushing. Every man needs to know he can go to a bathroom with a thing flush. Right? You want your stuff working. Well, my mouth has set me up so that when stuff try to go wrong, it can't. Because all I've been speaking is good, 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 good for 30 years now. So when you start telling people about how good God is and what he always done, they say, yeah, I hear you. But then come that B-U-T word. But. Now, now they want some proof. And say, if you don't have no proof, they're not listening at you very long. Matter of fact, go back to with me to the book of Exodus. Let's back up. We'll cast out devils, speak with new tongues. He said, they, they lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And the Bible said, and Jesus, when the 20, it said, and Jesus went with them, confirming the word with what signs or with miracles. Now watch it now. Exodus chap chapter 4. We've been preaching an, an incomplete gospel. We've been, we've been getting good word. In many churches, we've been getting good word. I, I didn't say all churches, but in many churches, we're getting good word. You know, we're we learning about God. But the hospitals are full of Christians. And saints are dying early, not living their life out. I ain't talking about no 70 or 80. That's not living long. The guy I'm about to go talk, talk about here in a minute, he was just starting his ministry at 80. He had nothing on, on his mind. Just starting his ministry at 80 years of age. And most people in this society nowadays start shutting down around 60. And the Bible said, with long life will I what? Satisfy you and show you my salvation. Go on, live, live till you're satisfied. Yeah, but the Bible said, you know, three score and ten. Go read that passage in its, in its, in its context. Wasn't talking about us. Talking about somebody that, that was, that was, that was uh, sinning against God. About reason you have to get, get to be 80. I'm not going for no 80. The least I'll, I'll even think about selling for is 120 at least, at the least. I'm really shooting for about 160. In good health. 
and with my wealth. I ain't going to be broke and old. If I'm going to be broken, oh, I, 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 I just may as well go on to heaven. At least everything up there is prosperous and rich and abundant. <laughs> That's a bad way to live, man. Beloved, I wish above what? All things. What? That means what? Prosper and be what? In health. Healthy and wealthy. Whole body wholeness. Everything working. Ooh, everything working from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Everything working. In that Exodus chapter 4, let me show you how God rolls here. Because you know God is good. Exodus chapter 4. Uh, Moses was tending sheep and uh, doing what he do because you know he had tried to help God out before it was time. That's why it's important that, that you wait on your season. Because if God not going, you on your own. See, God's will is God's bill. What God ordained, He maintains. Well, God guides, he provides. So if God not going, wait till he's going, and then ride on him. Hello, somebody. That's why season is critical. Timing is critical with everything you do with, with God. I don't care what anybody else is doing. If God hadn't told you to do that, don't move. I don't care what's popular. doesn't matter. Ask that young prophet. Old prophet told him to come to his house. God had told him, you go deliver the message, come straight back. Old prophet come up to him. He respected him. He, 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 he didn't want to uh, uh, disobey him, so he went to the prophet's house. And when he walked outside the house, a, a lion or a bear, one of them was waiting on him and killed him. Because he disobeyed God. He preferred to obey a man over God, and that is not good. He lost his life trying to please a man instead of trying to please God. The safest place is in the will of God. So Moses killed a man, hit him in the sand, and they found out about it. So he took off and uh, met Jethro. And so now he's been tending sheep now for 40 years. And he's walking and all of a sudden there's a bush burning that wasn't being consumed. So it got his attention. I guess they get yours too. Bush that keep burning, it never, never burns up. So you come a little closer, be a little curious, see how that's happening. And when he got a little closer, a voice spoke out of that bush and messed him up. <laughs> messed him up. Take them shoes off. <laughs> the ground you're standing on is holy ground. And then the Lord began to talk to him about the ministry that he had, had for him. Then he began to make excuses. He kept trying to, use, trying to use the excuse that he couldn't talk. I could have used that one too. But I said, okay. <laughs> My question was to him, How, you want me to teach your word? How can I do it if I can't talk? He said, trust me. And I said, okay. And I've been preaching ever since. You don't know what it's like to, to be a stutterer, and especially when you're in school stuttering, and your kids, they, they don't mean any harm, but they poke at you, and they, they poke fun at you, and, and they make big fun of you, and you're trying to smile it off like it, it ain't bothering you. But that hurts. You're not trying to do this. If you wouldn't, if you couldn't, if you didn't have to do it, you wouldn't be doing it. You, you can't do anything else. You got to get the word out eventually. You got to say something. And so you go along and you, you pick your words. And then when I met my wife, she, she finished my sentences for me. You know, Lord knew who to give me, praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. But the moment he called me to preach, and I said yes to the call, I stood up to preach, and my voice came out clear. And it's been like that ever since. So I know my weaknesses don't stop his purpose. Lord have mercy. My weaknesses don't stop his purpose. Because he, he perfects you for the purpose. You're going to call me to preach to people with me not to be a mouthpiece, then you got to perfect my mouth. And that's what he did. That's why I said, you going to give me an excuse about you stuttering or you can't talk? And I mean, he, 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 he held to that until God got angry at him and said, you know what? Where's your brother? So he went and got Aaron. Thank God for Aaron. That became the, the go-between Moses and the people, but not between Moses and God. Catch that. He spoke on behalf of Moses, what Moses had received from God. God didn't speak to Aaron. He spoke to Moses, who told Aaron what to say. Know your metron, say in your call. That's why, that's, that's why he, he jacked up Miriam, because she was criticizing him for Marrying this Ethiopian woman, and uh, God heard him. And he said, you know, you all, you all have dreams and visions. He said, but I talked to Moses face to face. We got to look closer than that. I ain't got to talk to him through a vision. I talked to him face to face. We've been face up, and you, you, you got enough nerve because he's your younger brother to put your mouth on it? Family or no family? Leprosy, have a meeting with Miriam. And for seven days, that's what she, she, was, she was messed up. And, he, and look, the very person she was criticized and had to pray for her. To get the leprosy off of her. I ain't got to follow you home to see if you're talking about me. <laughs> I got a 24-hour CIA on the job, man. Because the Lord knows, the only reason I'm going through what I'm going through is because of what I'm doing. I'm ministering the word. So you can't hit God. So you hit the messenger. Talk about him or say something about him or criticize him. God heard you. I'm just trying to help you. I tell people when, 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 when we do our, our, uh, when we do our uh, new, new members classes, we tell them it's, it's, it's better to just leave and, you know, not make a fuss than to be putting your mouth on men of God, on, on, on people of God. God hearing all that because see, the Bible says we're all his anointing. And he said, touch not my anointing and do my prophets no, no, no harm. The Lord said, vengeance is mine. I'll repay. I'll take care of who will mess with you. You ain't got to do nothing. Do what I tell you to do. I'll I get them. I don't fight my battle. I don't like getting hit. <laughs> so the Lord told me he'll fight for me. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't put my mouth on folk. Uh, I just love people. And then God puts his hand on people and put their mouth on me. So, so I'm good. You ain't going to ever worry about is the path going to be different with me today because of how, how I did. It won't ever happen. I still love you. <laughs> and I'll be loving you. Why? Because love is the, is the foundation for my faith, and I need my faith to work. And you are not that critical for, for me to mess up my faith. I choose to love you. That's my choice. Well, you hate me. I don't care. You don't dictate my love. It's part of my package. And the fruit of the Spirit is, Lord, help me preach up in here. 
So now here in verse 2 in the fourth chapter, Moses asked the Lord, he said, Now, Lord, now when I go to my people or to your people and tell them that you came to me and you sent me to them to, to, to talk to them, uh, they probably won't believe nothing I got to say. So the Lord did this. He said, all right, then, verse 2. And the Lord said unto him, what is this in thine hand? What you got in your hand? Well, he's a shepherd. Isn't it amazing that every time God got ready to put leaves on people, he chose shepherds? David was a shepherd. He chose Moses, who was a shepherd. But he... he he let them practice on sheep first before he put them over people. So don't despise your small beginnings or don't, don't think that's a waste of time in, in your life. Everything that's going on in your life is, is, is a part of your purpose. That's why you can't be sitting around comparing your, your journey with somebody else's journey. All of our journeys are different. So he chose a shepherd, Moses, who had been practicing for 40 years with sheep, not to lead these people. So, so Moses said, now, look, Lord, I, I hear what you're saying, but how am I going to, to convince them that you told me to tell them that? He said, what you got in your hand? He said, well, I got a rod. He said, cast it on the ground. And when it, the Bible said when he cast it on the ground, it turned into a serpent. And what's that next verse say? He, he what? It said he fled. Fled means what? Not slow. Not, <laughs> Ella, we're talking about an 80-year-old man. Say he fled. I mean, we got to get up out of here, feet. Come on here. We don't need no Geritol moment. <laughs> so he fled from that circle. And the Lord said, Moses, pick it up by the tail. He finally got him back. I don't know about that, Lord. Because hmm. sure. <laughs> evidently, it, it wasn't a little bitty snake. We found later on it was large enough to eat other snakes. So he grabbed, he, so he grabbed it, he caught it by the tail, and the Bible said, it is a turn back to the rod. He said, the way they'll believe you is you, you need a miracle. So then in verse 6 and verse 7, it says, he said, now, take your hand, put it in your bosom, and put it out. And when he put it out, his hand was white with leprosy. He said, he said put it back in your bosom. Put it back in your bosom, put it out this time. It was just like his other hand, normally. He said, by thee. Look at me now. I'm going to go to verse 8. Glory to God. Am I happy? We got an incomplete gospel. And the world is not impressed with us, but they will be. Hallelujah. Verse 8. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of of the first sign. I want you to hear somebody just said. He said miracles have a voice. If they were not hearken to the voice of the first sign, of the first miracle, miracles have a voice. They speak loud. You've been knowing this person all their life, and they've been a cripple. And then all of a sudden, God heals them, 
in front of your eyes. That's a loud voice. So it must be something what to this God that they're talking about because look what just happened. He said if they will not hear the voice of the first sign, then they will hear the voice of the second one. All the world been hearing from us is one voice, and that's the gospel, but not the voice of the miracle. And we need both. We need proof. They say, I hear you talking, but they haven't heard a miracle yet. They haven't seen one perform yet, even on them. And though our word is good, is not attracting people because they don't see nothing. And God never intended for the word to be preached without proof. God never intended for the word to be preached without proof. God was given proof all the way back here in Exodus chapter 4. Moses said, Lord, how, will they, how am I going to convince them? He said, they, they're going to need to see something. I got I to gotta perform miracles that they can see, something they can what? Pick up by the intel of their five senses. He said, if they, if they, if they won't believe the voice of the first one, they'll believe the second one. And going on and read, but on down that 30, in that 30th verse, or go to that seventh chapter, it, really, just go to that seventh chapter, and it says, when they heard what Moses had said and saw the sign, they believed. When they heard the words and saw, see, he said, go into all the world, preach God to every creature, and... These signs shall follow them that believe. It's not to go preach the gospel, period. No, conjunction, and. Go to Georgia 16, Georgia 6, excuse me. Am I happy? See, you have to create an atmosphere for the miraculous, for miracles to take place. So people, when they come in, they're expecting something to happen. And it's easy to work miracles when you have people that have expectation. Easy to work. Easy to get people healed. When, you, when, you, when, you, when you're hearing, hearing incident after incident from, from the Scripture of what God did it before, help people out. He's no respected person, and he doesn't change. He'll do it again for us. If we believe, key word there, if we believe. Now watch this now. There was some ex expectation. Uh, Georgia 6. And Gideon said unto him, oh, excuse me, verse 13. I'm gone. Y'all better catch up. Gideon was hiding from the Midianites. Here come an angel talking about mighty man of valor. Who? <laughs> I mean, so, so immediately uh, Gideon started venting. Mighty man of valor. Hey, by the way, uh, where is this God? <laughs> Look at verse 13. And Gideon said unto, he, unto him, Oh my Lord, the well, if the Lord, if the Lord, if the Lord. See, anytime you got an if in there, we got a problem. Houston, we have a problem. Because there are no ifs in faith. There are no ifs in faith. Faith is settled. Faith is a done deal. Faith got it. 
not getting it, not wondering about getting it. Faith got it. Faith is now. But when you start putting if, you're not convinced yet. You won't see nothing. The scripture said, if you believe what? And doubt not. And doubt not. If is a doubt. I wonder why it's taking so long. You get nothing. You're not convinced yet. You are convinced when time is not an issue. Whether it's today or next month, it don't matter to you. You're convinced that because God spoke it, that's a wrap in the story that settles it, bless God, it's going to happen no matter what, how long it takes. Time is a product of the fall. Well, God is everything he is. And if God said, by his strike, ye were healed, bless God, you are what? Healed. I don't care what your body said. I don't care what that doctor said. I don't care what Pook and them say. The Bible said, let God be what? True. And every man a liar. The problem is we, we keep switching. We, we operating from the spirit one minute, then we back in the flesh. Spirit of what? Back in the flesh. Spirit, back in the flesh. One minute we walk in my faith, next minute we walk by our senses. Because we're trying to feel something. You see, faith, uh, 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 we walk by faith, not by what? Sight, or not by our senses. I, I don't feel healed yet. I, I, I don't feel this. Uh, 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 this is still going. Now, 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 now this starts hurting. <laughs> don't shout me down. So now we start to question the validity of what God told you last year. He told you you was healed last year, and you've been quoting you was healed all during the year, and now something new pop up in the office and you go, oh. People go, it only takes this long, it only takes this long to doubt. It's not that people don't have faith. It, it, the problem is they don't have continuous faith. Peter had faith when he stepped out of that boat. But it wasn't continuous. Because the first sign of what? Trouble. See, that's why you stop looking around so much. If he had kept his eyes on Jesus. But see, some folks just too nosy. Yeah, I said it. Just too nosy. Trying to see everything. Don't want to miss nothing. Well, I got one statement for you. Remember Lot's wife. What was that problem? Nosy. The Lord told them, do not look back. What'd she do? Nosy. That's what she stayed right there. For the joy that was set before him. He had focus. He looked straight ahead. He looked right on. He kept his eye on the prize. Forgetting those things that are what? Behind you. I always make the statement, when we go to Hawaii, it's so different there because they don't have billboards. None. So you can't get distracted driving because there's there no billboards to read and look at and try to see what they're saying and what, what's coming up in the next mile and a half. 
Here in the United States, you got billboards on both sides of the road, and, and you're trying to read all of them and drive at the same time. No, that. Tell your neighbor, stay focused. You got to be focused in this hour. Because you got an enemy out there that's trying to take you out. A lot of the, a lot of the things that a lot of people be, be, have been being challenged even more so now in their bodies and their affairs and their families. Type of thing. Because the enemy knows it's about to break loose. Did y'all hear the prophecy last, last, last Sunday about, about what God is doing and get ready to do? He don't want that to happen. So he's going to try to stop you by making you think it's getting worse. Persecution comes because of the word. So, so don't be surprised what pops up at you. You go, oh, I know who that is. There you go again. And you just like water off a dumb roll on. I ain't moved by that. I made this statement a while back. I said, let your discouragements encourage you. What the enemy is trying to do to discourage you, make it your encouragement. Let it motivate you to even do more. I get motivated. Every time they ever try to attack me, I get motivated. I get happy. All right. Let's get it all. Oh, devil, let's get it on. <laughs> and I challenge him boldly because I don't fear him. God is for me. No weapon. He's going to give me that prophet. He said here, he said, oh. Oh, my Lord. Uh, 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 Lord, uh, he said, uh, where be the Lord? Uh, why, you said the Lord is with us? Well, why then is all these things, all this what befallen us? And then he said, and this, and where be all this miracle? Where be? You probably ask the question too. Where be all this miracle? That our fathers told us about when he brought us about Egypt and, and all the plagues that came with Egypt. God said in the book of Romans chapter, I think chapter 7, I think chapter 7 or chapter 9, he said, he said, he said, I on purpose pick Pharaoh so I can get some glory out of him and offer him. I picked him and I hardened his heart. So I get a chance to show my power to the world so they will recognize I am the only God. They know the God beside me. Can't nobody do this but me. Every time Pharaoh got ready to let him go, God was hardening his heart again. He said, not yet. Because you had plenty of time to get it right. I gave you all 400 years. You put my people in slavery and you held them in bondage for 400 years. So now it's the big payback. And he, he, he would harden his heart and another plague. Boom. He gets it. I'm let, him, ooh, let him go. No, I ain't letting him go. Harden his heart again. Another plague. And the final one was, was when, he, when he let him go and he was going to the Red Sea and Pharaoh's heart was hardened one more time. This time he come after him again. They don't have it. See, there are no soldiers in Israel at this time because they've been slaves all this time. So nobody, nobody's trained to fight. But God only has to speak a word. The fight's over. And the Bible says he hard his heart that time, told Moses, go stand before the people, stretch your little rod out, and then I'm going to divide the waters and dry the ground, 
so all of you, over two million of you, can walk over on dry ground, and the water on, the, on each side just they just be held back by the by the wind. And I'm let, I'm make sure all you all get across first, and then I'm gonna bait Pharaoh to follow you into the water. And then I'm a, then, then, then I'm gonna take the wheels off his chariots so they can't run. And then, I'm, then, then I want you to stretch your rod back out one more time. And this time the water's going to come in on top of them and destroy all of them, and not one of them is going to escape. See, Bob, people, the, the Scripture said it's a dangerous thing to fall into the hands of God. That's why you need to check yourself on this side before God gets involved. He said, he said it's better for you to judge yourself than, than, than God have to have to do it for you. You ain't got to fight your own battles. You know, how, you know, you know how, how God always punished Israel? Turn them over to their enemies. Well, you know your enemies are not going to have no kind of mercy on you. That's what was happening then when, when, when he got to Gideon. He said, uh, and Gideon said, well, where be this God that's supposed to be with us? Supposed to be with us. See, p- 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 God, if God is with us, miracles should, should be with us also. Yeah. Remember now, Mark 6, 16, 20 said, and, and, and Jesus went with them, confirming the word. If God is with you, then bless God that miracle should be with us, with us also. Yes, yes. Go to Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2. And then one more scripture. I'm happy. I'm expecting a miracle. Had a sister coming in for Friday night. She was, was battling, being challenged. They'd been to the doctor too, and they, they couldn't, couldn't find nothing. But she was, uh, what's it called that when your equilibrium is off? Uh, vertigo. That's what she had been experiencing. And you know, me, I'm just, let me pray for you. And so I laid my hands on and prayed for her, and we went on and, and had prayer Friday night. I spoke to her this morning. I said, well, how is it? He said, it, it, it is well. I, I went home and forgot about it and hadn't had a problem with it since. I said, that's cheaper, isn't it? That ain't cost her a dime. She just come to prayer because she was determined not to let that stop her. She was determined to not let that stop her. She was determined not to let that stop her. Because some people look, look for, the, for, the, for, the, for the easy excuse not to show up. Up, I got to run in my stocket. Can't go check when I run in my stocket. Take them off! <laughs> Barefooting. <laughs> What's clothes got to do with it? It's in the press. You got to press your way. When God sees your hunger... For the things of him, he'll show up for you all the time. In her prayer, she got a miracle. Ain't had a problem with it since. You got to be what's happening. You got to press through some stuff. Everything's not going to be the way you want it. I can testify. How many times do you think the devil tried to shut me up in 30-something years of preaching? You'll never know it. But this many time I come here under attack. You'll never know it. Because I went to the one that could help me. And here's another thing. I didn't change what I was saying because of the attack. Kept saying the same thing. Kept saying the same thing. Body, body singing a whole nother song. But my mouth kept singing the same one I've been singing. 
for the last 30 years. You got, you got to make sure, you got, you got to make sure people got that, that, that you don't change songs if that's, if that's not where God is going. Your body sing all kinds of songs. But who runs you? You or your body? I rest my case. You got to press. Press. I think back, as, think back at just as recent as, as Tuesday night. You didn't know it. My wife knew what I'd been challenged with starting on, on that Monday. I said, where'd this come from? I said, stupid stuff. That's all I call it, stupid stuff. Foolishness. But I, I made a decision. I was going to take the next several hours and do nothing but just quote healing scriptures. And for three and a half hours, I quoted nothing but the word, healing scriptures, out of my mouth. Three and a half hours, nonstop. He said, it takes all that. It did for me. Because, see, I have a vision. Every time I quote the word, I'm slicing and dicing. I'm cutting up the devil. I'm hammering him upside his crazy, stupid, low-down, dirty head. <laughs> and then I'm filling up my being with life. I'm filling up my being with life. Proverbs 4 and 22 says, the words I speak, they're what? Spirit. And they're what else? Life. Jesus said, uh, the, 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 uh, 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 John 63 says, the words I speak, they are spirit and they are life. He said, words are health and become found. Probably 4 and 22 says, his word is life because found and it's health to all my flesh. So if I speak the word, I'm speaking life. I said, you know what? All I'm going to do is stand right here, sit right here, and just speak life over my body. And for the next three and a half hours. I sit there, look out the window, watch cars pass by at, at, at my house, and just quoted the word and told my body what it was going to do and what it wasn't going to do. I talked to my body, and I talked to the devil, and I quoted the word for three and a half hours. I was here Tuesday night, wasn't I? Could you tell anything had been bothering me? No. Why? Because the word is alive and powerful and sharper than two-edged sword, and it can cut the stuff out of you, you that's trying to mess with you. I put the word on it. I put the word on it. I put the word on it. It takes discipline. But what, which, would you, which, which, would you, which would you rather be, medicated or have that foolishness what, eradicated? I chose to have it eradicated. The Bible says power of life that, that's in, in, in my tongue. I can have what's that word I say. I started saying, whole body holiness. Perfection, everything working glory to God. Body, you heard me. I command you, obey me in Jesus' name. And they started just rattling off healing scriptures. And come back around and hit it again. Bible says, when the woman did she blubber on the way to Jesus, it says she kept saying, If I can't protect the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. She kept saying. She kept the word in her mouth. I made the decision, I'm speaking but one language. There's so many things now I don't even respond to anymore. Because it, it, it would take me out of what I'm out of what I'm out of what I'm saying. If I say that, that's gonna contradict what I'm saying over here. I don't need no contradiction. I need everything on the same page. And they were all on one accord. 
That's why I keep telling you, beware the three C's, the triple C's. Criticism, complaining, and comparison. Those things will jack your faith up. So I learned, I'm, 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 I'm disciplining myself to all I speak is one language, and that's the word of God, and many things I don't even respond to. I smile at you, but I never speak it. Jesus. In the book of Hebrews chapter 2, it says in verse 4, and God, bearing them what witness, Hebrews 2 and 4, with, both with what signs, wonders, and miracles, and gifts of the Spirit. Yeah. He said God, went, God was there bearing witness. See, miracles are a witness to the gospel. That's why if all we got is the gospel and not the witness, it's incomplete. That's why the world is not impressed with us. And when you read, um, uh, I think it's Acts chapter 4 and verse 29, and they were in prayer. They went back to their own company. And they said, and now, Lord, and now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants, that with all boldness we may speak thy word. Look, look, look now. Next verse. By stretching forth thine hand to heal. He said, he said, the boldness we have to preach is because we know we got some evidence going to back it up. Your boldness is influenced by whether or not you got some signs and wonders backing up your message. He said, the way, you, the way you cause us to walk in boldness is you back us up with the miracles. That's not happening. That's not happening. We, 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 we can't be as con, co, what's the word? confident or convincing when we, don't, when we don't have the miracles. But when we got the miracles, we can boldly say. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. Give out the end of name. Rise up and walk. And Bible said, he didn't wait. He went and grabbed them by the hand and pulled them. Bible said, and he leaped up, praising God, dancing and jumping and leaping for joy. Wasn't no gradual healing. Instant. Everything working instantly. All of us. Suddenly, glory to God. Total manifestation in his body. I'm saying we need a gospel with a witness. And the witness is the miraculous signs, wonders, and miracles. And until that's happening, it's hard to convince the world that what you're saying about what God is and what he'll do is true. They said, what make us bold? Miracles. Jesus said, I go with you to make sure what you're preaching is confirmed. Most of the Lord, I go, but how many of He said, I, 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 I give you some proof to go along with you so, 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 so that they can have a voice. He gave them a miracles. Anytime you want to prove the, prove the gospel, you need miracles. You been helped today? Yes. Would you stand, please? I'm expecting any moment now. Yes. Cynthia? Yes. Any moment now. Any moment I receive. Yes. Enough is enough. Yes. Yes. Putting up with this for too long. Mm -hmm. Told you from the start, it, it, it wasn't that physical, it's spiritual. A lot of the attacks, and I ain't nothing. You can go to the doctor, and they can't find nothing wrong with you. 
It's not a physical thing that you do. It's spiritual warfare. The Bible says the weapons of our, of, of our warfare is not coming, but they might do God. Might have to put it on a stronghold. It's not a physical warfare you're in. The devil, the devil is attacking you physically, but the origin of, of it is not phys physically, it's spiritual. And you got to recognize who you're dealing with. A low down, dirty dog. You got to tell him, hit the road, Jack. Don't come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. And don't come back no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are y'all getting this? Yes. You about ready to see, see, see something? Yeah, yeah. See, the atmosphere is being created by the word. See, the, the, the Bible says, G would be, be in, in, in a certain place teaching, and then it would say, and the, and the power of God was present to heal. Glory to God, hallelujah. The word creates the environment for the miracles. It creates expectation. So if you don't preach your own miracles, you don't get none. People are tired of going to church the same and leaving and going, going back the same. It's time for something to change. Hallelujah. Especially since, especially since we're all young enough. Hello, we're all young enough, right? Man just started this ministry. Louise at 80. Just warm it up. Just, just get started. <laughs> Child, you ain't close to finish. Ah, <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Praise him. Hello. Yeah. Not even close. Too much to do, girl. <laughs> Too much to do, girl. Ah! <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yes. It's about to get good, y'all. Still got too much outreach to do, sis. Yeah. He knows it. <laughs> what I'm talking about. it and it's going. It's going. Cause, cause, cause that's what you say. You're gonna have what you say. These attack I'm telling people, God, hear, hear me when I tell you. This is not a physical thing most of you are dealing with right now. It's spiritual. But if you hold fast and you're confessing the faith without wavering, he is faithful to that promise. He will do what he said he will do. All of a sudden, You wake up from a nap, and all of a sudden, your whole body is just perfect. No gradual healing. I'm talking about just like that. Everything brought into completion, just like that. Cause, cause I, I, I heard some of y'all singing. It's been a long time coming, but my change is come. Mark my word. 
and miraculous would be so norm in, in this place. It'd be the norm. Marvin, it'd just be the norm. And it'll be through anybody. Your hands. Your mouth will speak and a miracle take place. Your hands. Your mouth. He just needs availability. See, I can't reach what you can reach. He just needs you available. He didn't ask you if you was gifted. He's the gift. It's time. It's time. Anybody need prayer today? Anybody not born again? I never assume that we are, we, we are among all believers. There may be somebody that may not be, or somebody may be been, is a believer, but in a backslidden condition. Things happen. I always say this, the devil never presents you an ugly picture. He presents you with a pretty picture. How can he deceive you if it's ugly? You ain't going for it no way. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm just trying to say. He's trying to pre present you with something that will, 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 is going to entice you, yes. to attract you, to pull you away from God to him. Yes. Then once he gets you out there, did he drop you like a hot potato? But don't be too ashamed to get it right. I'd rather be embarrassed before men than to be hot in hell. Hell is still real. And it's being filled, unfortunately. The Bible says it enlarges itself to accommodate the increase. I'm not one of them. Hallelujah. You don't have to be one of them either. Maybe you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit. With the evidence of speaking with other tongues as the Spirit give utterance. The Bible says, yes, you, sh you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And he said, and you will speak with other tongues. Thank God for tongues. They have been a blessing for me for over 30-some years. Glory to God. It has helped me. Oh, God has helped me. Oh, God has helped me. Oh, God has helped me not make a bunch of dumb mistakes. And I know, and I know the mind of God. By being sensitive to the unction and leading of, of the Holy Ghost. When you, the more you pray in tongues, the more sensitive your spirit be, becomes to the, to the presence of God and the voice of God. That's why I pray in tongues almost every day, at least an hour. It's been a blessing. Some days two and three hours, depending on where I am. But I tell you what, it served me well. I'm in a place of rest. Maybe you don't have a church home. You're standing in one of the best ones on the, on the planet. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You live up in here. Because yes, I commanded I come you a long time ago yes. to live and not die. I say it again. I command you to live. In hell. I, 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 I never have gotten the knack of doing funerals. I don't want no practice. So I command you to live. Amen. We don't do well with funerals here. It's just not our niche. I come to speak life to you. My Marjorie, keep on living, girl. You just warm it up. 84 and still and still going strong, huh? All right, girl, what I'm talking about? Sure. Go it on, girl. Yeah. 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 Keep living. Live healthy. If you've been standing and believing, you've been challenged. You ain't got no change yet that you desire, but you want to take advantage of this next level of anointing that's in front of you. I'm here. You can use me. If you're not born again, or you're out of with the Lord, or the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or you need a church home, or just need prayer, come now in Jesus' name.
will minister to you. It's God. I do all I do by him. I can't do nothing by myself. I wouldn't chance it. It's too risky. Jesus. But with God, I can do what? All things. Lord, have mercy. Anybody present? You're here. You're not deep prayer with that? Well, 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 praise God. Look like everybody got it. What? Going on. All right, then, y'all. Hey. Yeah. It's time to give. I need a drink, brother. Yes, sir. <laughs> Whew. I don't preach. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. Others will assist you in preparing your gifts. Make call check out the BLCC or if you going to use a credit card, you can go to the bookstore. If you're going to use Givelify, uh, then download it on your phone from your app store. If you're using a tablet, then you got to go to the Givelify.com website and download it from that website for your tablet. But many of you are using it, and uh, so it's, it's been a convenience for you and a blessing for you. So we just want to make everything available to you. The world is using it. So why can't the church have these tools available for, for the church. So you just go on your phone. Just go to Givelify, go on your phone and put your contributions in there and next thing I know I get a ding. That ding tells me somebody that has given her. Praise the Lord. Money cometh and keeps on coming and keeps on coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I need, I need you to look with me uh, very briefly. Uh, in the scripture, I want to show you this verse. Uh, in the book of um, Genesis, the 14th chapter. And this is when um, Abraham had left. The earth chalice and obedience to God. And uh, while he was, and you know, his, his nephew fathered him Lot. And um, Lot was a, a thorn in his flesh for a season now because he kept messing up. Bottom line. <laughs> yeah, that's his family though. But, the, but he, he, again, he disobeyed an instruction. The instruction was to leave his family. But he brought his family with him. And that little fellow, caused them problems. He did. Who was he down there in the, who was he down there uh, uh, in Sodom and Gomorrah? Who was he interceding for in Sodom and Gomorrah? His nephew was down there. So he's bargaining with God down to 10 people. Because a lot. Wasn't supposed to be there no way. But no, I don't leave nobody. I don't make, I want to hurt nobody's feeling. Any of you. So anyway, <laughs> they got captured. Abraham took his, his servants. They went and, 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 and uh, rescued them. So now this king want to give Abraham some of the spoil. But Abraham said, verse 22, but Abraham said to the king of uh, Sodom, I have done what? People of God, all Abraham said was, I have made God my source. So, and I don't want you giving me nothing with strings attached. Because then you be running around telling folk, I did it. He rich because of me. He, no, he said, no, no, no. I've already sworn to God. He is my source only. And if I be rich, it be, be, be because God made me rich. 
And that's exactly what he did. He didn't take nothing. He gave up that, he took that 10 percent gift to the, the, the people that went to the fight. He didn't get, give them their, their part. But as for me, I got a source. And he ain't too shabby. People of God, since God is our source, we all right. We all right. Because he knows what thing you have need of before you ask him. So we're going to be all right. I don't care what your wallet say. I don't care what, what your purse say right now. I don't care what your money clip say. I don't care what your bank account say right now. We're going to be all right. Why? Because God is our source. And you make him your source by your tithe and your offering. You say, I'm looking to you only to meet my needs. God said, okay, no problem. I, I can handle that one. So then what? Wealth and riches are supposed to be what? In our house. You see that? Then bring it in the house. $22,000 and the building will be paid for in its entirety. So if the Lord is leading you today and it's a good one, I prefer cashiers. <laughs> Write the check. I thought we decree and declare that this house, this building is paid off this year in Jesus' name. Now, Satan, we bind you, command you, take your hands off of God's people's finances and go, ministers, and call the money to come in now in Jesus' name. And all who agree, said? Amen. Father, we lift these gifts of love you in great appreciation. Thank you for the privilege and opportunity to give it to the kingdom. Lord, we have lifted our hand to you, that you are our source. And we decree and declare that all of our needs are met over and above, the money just keep on coming and coming and coming. Not only for our own life, but for our families, for our children, oh God, grandchildren, oh God, for the payoff of God's house, oh God. The money just keep on coming in Jesus' name. And all who agree said? And when they gave, they praised. <laughs> who? Oh, right now. God. Oh, I'm so rich. Yeah. 
I just feel loaded. Hallelujah. But right now I'm going to go eat, though. So we'll be loaded and eat. Praise God, praise God. It's been a good day. Remember now, all baptismal people, please see Sister Lee and Sister Carter after service. On the 24th of this month, uh, we are having our baptismal service, and uh, it's going to be at 3 o'clock. The time is 3 p.m. The time is what? 3 p.m. on the 24th of this month. We're having a baptismal service here at BLCC. Uh, everything will be set up. We're going to make sure that uh, I promise them that, that, that the water will not be cold. So I'm going to hook up the heater to the, to the uh, baptism and make sure the water is warm. Praise the Lord. So that uh, you can get in warm and leave out warm. Praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. God. So good to have you, Pastor, yes. and your wife. Praise yes. God. Praise Thank God. you for coming yes. to our church today. We're good to have you. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. If opportunity to present this step, please come back and visit with us, us again. We're just here hanging out, having fun, enjoying the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, let me, let me bless you before we leave. Well, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to thee. The Lord live upon, upon, upon you and give you peace, grace, mercy, and peace of God our Father. And the Lord Jesus Christ be multiplied. Under you. you. Have one afternoon, pick God. Remember, remember the three C's criticism, complaining, and comparison.